So last year, you should have been exposed to trigonometric functions or sinusoidal functions, right? Whatever your teacher called them. And that's just a function that contains sine or cos, right? Well, let's do an example just uh, for a little bit of a review here. Let's say you're given f of x equals negative 3 sine 2x plus, uh, I'm going to put pi over 4 plus 3, okay? So the only thing that's different now is we're using radians instead of degrees, but everything else is exactly the same, right? If you think of this 3 on the end, what does that represent? That represents your axis, right, or the equation of your midline, right? So that's the horizontal line going through the middle of your graph. Um, if you think of this 3 here, that's your amplitude, right? So that 3 on the front is your amplitude. That's the distance from the middle, right, from the axis to the top or to the bottom. Or you could think of it as the total distance from the bottom of your graph to the very top divided by 2, right? So it's half your total height. Um, the negative here, that represents a vertical reflection, right? Vertical reflection, so it's going to flip down. Uh, this 2 here, that's your k value, right? And if you recall, the k value is what impacts your period. So your period, in this case, would be equal to, we used to say 360, now we're going to say 2 pi divided by k, right? So in this case, 2 pi divided by 2, which is just pi. So the period for this one is just pi. And then you have pi over 4, which is your phase shift. So this whole graph is moving pi over 4 to the left, right, because it's plus. So if I want to graph this, I can go ahead, start just like that. Say that's x, this is f of x. I can say the axis is at 3, right, so 3. The amplitude is 3, so the maximum height will be 6 and the minimum height will be 0, right? It is a sine function, so I'm going to draw a sine function here, but it's a vertical reflection, so it's upside down. So instead of drawing it like something like this, that's just what a regular sine function looks like. It's upside down, so it's going to be more like like this, right? If you want to draw a dotted line here just to show the axis, right, that could be helpful. And what else do we know? Well, I know the period is pi, so when you get to the end of the cycle here, that's at pi, meaning that the middle here you could say is, you know, pi over 2, right? This point down here is pi over 4. You know, this point up here, this maximum point, it's going to be halfway between pi over 2 and pi. So 3 pi over 4, okay? But that's not all we have because we also have the phase shift, right? And the phase shift is usually what I'll do last, right? I'll try to get all this in place first, and then I'll shift the graph left or right. And so in this case, we're moving pi over 4 to the left. So, okay, this distance here is pi over 4, right? Because I labeled that pi over 4. I want to move that distance to the left. So this point would move to 0 here. It would move to the start. So I'm going to do that. It's going to go right there. Um, this point here is going to move same distance to the left, so that's going to be here. This one's going to move to here. This one down here will move to here. And then there'll be another one that comes in, right, from over here. It's going to move to the left like that, and you can connect these all together. And so this new graph here, the red one I'm drawing, is your new function, right? That's the actual f of x. Okay, and that would be your final answer for this. So that's just a quick review of how we graph these functions, um, especially now that we have radians, right, instead of degrees. Now let's say you're given some graphs, right? I'm going to draw one out here just quickly, a little sketch. So I'm just going to graph this uh, quickly. It's going to go down like that, and then up, and then down, and then back up, something like that. And we're going to say we have a maximum value here of 1 and a minimum value down here of negative 1, right? So right there, right there, that's negative 1. And then here, here, and here is positive 1, okay? And we're also going to be told that this here is at 0 0.5, and this here is at 1. Um, and that's it. That's all we're going to be told, okay? So that's your x and y. And so let's say for this one, the question is, determine a sinusoidal equation for this graph, right? So come up with the equation for this. Well, what do we know? I know the axis is at 0, right? And I know that because that's equally far away from the top and the bottom. Speaking of that distance, that's your amplitude, right? Because you go up one to get to the top and down one to get to the bottom, 
the amplitude is going to be 1. So you could say the amplitude is equal to 1. Um, now what kind of graph does this look like? Well, it starts from the top, goes down, and then comes back up. That kind of looks like a cos function, right? Cos always starts from the top, goes down, and comes back up like that. So we can make this a cos just to keep it easy on ourselves. So I'll say y equals 1 for the amplitude times cos. So you don't have to write that one. I'll just put cos. And like we said, the equation of the axis is 0, right? The midline's at 0, so you don't have to add anything on the end. The only thing we're really concerned about here is what goes inside here with the x, because it doesn't look like our period is equal to 2 pi, or 360 degrees, right? Um, in fact, if you look at you know the top of this graph, it goes down, comes back up. That looks like one cycle, and then you have a second cycle, like this, right? So that's a second repeating of that pattern. So if you look at the first cycle here, if you look at the length of this, that would be your period. So it looks like the period is 0 0.5, right? So if you remember, so if we say period is 0 0.5, if you recall, the equation says that k is equal to 2 pi over p, or you could say p is equal to 2 pi over k, right? However you want to write it. But in this case, I'll write it like this just so we can solve for k. So you'll have 2 pi over 0 0.5, which is your period, which is equal to 4 pi. Right, so you would put 4 pi in here for your k value right next to your x. And that makes sense because what you want to do here, because what you want this to do is when you plug in 0 0.5 for your x value right here, that should make this whole thing equal 2 pi because you want cos, this cos function here, to think that it's taking cos of 2 pi because that would show that you're at a height of 1, right? It would show that the cycle is complete. So when you plug in 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 4 pi is 2 pi. That's exactly what you want to get, okay? So this here is your final answer. Um, let's do a couple more just to get the point across. Say we have this one where you come down like this and then up and then down. And we can say we have a maximum height of 2, so that's the height there. And we'll also have a minimum height down here of negative 2. So that means that your midline's at 0, right? And it also means your amplitude is 2, right? You go up 2 to the top and down 2 to the bottom. So that should be pretty obvious. And then we also know that this here is at 8, and you could say this is at 4. Okay? So I know my amplitude is 2, my midline is 0. Um, what kind of function does this look like? Should we use sine or cos? I think we should probably use sine, right? Because sine usually you know goes like this. It starts in the middle. This also starts in the middle, except it goes down, right? So we could say this is a negative sine, right? So for the amplitude, I could say the amplitude is actually you know, negative 2 instead of just 2, because it looks like a vertical reflection, right? So for this equation, I'll say y equals negative 2, and we're going to use sine. And then the only question left is what goes in the bracket with the x, right? Well, again, what's your period here? Well, you start here. One cycle goes like that. It looks like the period is 8. So the period's 8. Then I'll say k is equal to 2 pi divided by 8, which is pi over 4. So I should plug in pi over 4 for my k value. And that makes sense, because again, when you plug in your x value, which is one period, so the 8, you want this whole thing to turn into 2 pi. And if you plug in 8, it does do that, right? 8 divided by 4 is 2, so you get 2 pi. So this is your final answer that represents this graph, right? And of course, you have multiple options, right? There's an infinite amount of equations that can represent this graph. This was just the most straightforward one that we could come up with, okay? Um, so again, I, I try not to include any sort of phase shifts unless we have to because again that's just you know just to make it easier right so instead of doing a phase shift i said oh just make it a reflection right because you could have made this a cos or you could have made it a sign with a phase shift like you could have done a bunch of things with this but we chose the most straightforward answer um, but i would encourage you to try to come up with some other equations for each of these right on your own just as practice let's do one more let's say we have something that goes like this And we'll say it has a maximum value up here of 3. And it has a minimum value down here of negative 5. Okay. And you can kind of see here that this down here is at 40. And this here is going to be at 80. Okay. So again, they give us a couple cycles of this pattern, right? Not just one. So what can we see here? Well, where's my midline at? Well, I go down 5 from 0 to the bottom and up 3. So this is a distance of 5. This is a distance of 3. Altogether, 
that's eight, right? If you add those together. So the total height from the bottom to the top is eight. And if you divide that by two, you get four. So the amplitude is gonna be four. And if you think about where the midline is, it's gotta be halfway. So it should be down here at negative one. All right, this is really where your midline is. And if you're confused by that, just take a look. From negative one to negative five, that's a distance of four. From negative one up to three, that's also a distance of four, right? So the midline has to be right in the middle. So the midline there is negative one. So when I write this equation, I'm gonna have a negative one on the end. Now at the front, I'm gonna have my amplitude of four. Um, we should decide what type of function this is. I think it looks a bit like a cos function that's upside down. So I can say negative four to flip it, and I'm gonna make it a cos, right? Because again, cos starts at the top and goes like this. This is the opposite, it starts at the bottom and goes up. So I'm just making a negative cos graph. So negative cos, and then in the bracket, I need something to go next to my x. So I say, what's the period? Period here looks like 40, right? Because that's one cycle, is that 40? So the period's equal to 40. So I'll say my k value is equal to two pi over 40, which is equal to pi over 20. So that's my k value, pi over 20. And this is my answer, right? And again, there are multiple answers you can come up with. This is the one I found. Feel free to figure out, you know, some more for this one just as practice. Okay, last question here. A rung on a hamster wheel with a radius of 25 centimeters is traveling at a constant speed. It makes one complete revolution in three seconds. The axle of the hamster wheel is 27 centimeters above the ground. Sketch the graph of the height of the rung above the ground during two complete revolutions, beginning when the rung is closest to the ground. Write two equations that model the situation. Okay, so let's kind of do a sketch here of what we're talking about. So you have a hamster wheel, and when they say the word rung, uh, if you can imagine this, a hamster wheel in three dimensions kind of looks like this, and they're connected with all these little, well, the rungs, right? That's what these are called. I was going to say bars, but those are what the rungs are, those little lines that the hamster runs on. So we're measuring the height of one of those lines in particular, okay? So with that in mind, um, we're starting with that rung on the bottom, and it's going to go around twice, and we have to show on a graph the height of that rung, okay? Now, what do we know here? Well, we know the radius of the circle, right? We know the radius of the wheel. The radius is 25 centimeters. So that's 25. And this here is also 25 centimeters. We also know that the axle is 27 centimeters off the ground. So here's your axle, right? It's this thing here. That is 27 centimeters off the ground. So if here's the ground, that would mean that this gap here between the bottom of the wheel and the ground is two centimeters, right? Because this here is a distance of 25, this is a distance of 27, so this is the difference between those two. So it's just two centimeters, okay? Now let's go ahead and we'll try to graph this. So here's my graph. And I always try to line it up with my sketch, right? That's really helpful. So this is my time in seconds. This is my height in centimeters, okay? So this here, your axis, right, or your midline, is gonna be at the same height as the axle of the wheel, right? So it's gonna be at 27. The minimum value is gonna be the same as the minimum value of a rung on the wheel, which is two centimeters. And the maximum value up here, well, that's 27 plus another 25. That's gonna get you to 52 centimeters, right? So that's the maximum height of the rung on the wheel, right? So everything lines up as you can see, right? The maximums line up, the axle lines up with the axis, the minimum lines up with the minimum, and the ground lines up with zero, okay? So that's how I like to do it, just to help me envision what's going on. Now, they say you're gonna start at the bottom, so okay, you're at the bottom. You're gonna go up to the top and come back down like that. That's just a model of the height as you go around, right? Because you start going up, you get to the middle, keep going up, you get to the top, come back down, right? So that's how your height changes, okay? Now, that's just one rotation or revolution. They want two, so we gotta draw that again, something like that, and you wanna keep it you know, to scale looking nice, okay? Now, we know that one revolution is in three seconds, so we can mark this here as being three seconds, and then here we would have six seconds for when it finishes the second revolution, right? And if we know that, um, you know, we could show some other things, like if I draw my axis like that, I could show that the maximum point here 
is halfway to three seconds, so 1.5 seconds. You know, I could show that this here, when you cross that average, that's halfway to 1.5, so 0 0.75. Um, you could find this one here when it's at the axis on the way down. Right, that's going to be 2.25. Right, so you could label those, and you could label them for this one as well. Right, like this here, that's going to be 4.5 seconds when you're at the top here, halfway between three and six. Right, um, so you can label all sorts of things on here. You know, make sure that's zero, zero. Right. Um, now that's the graph, but now we have to come up with two equations that represent this function. Okay. So, and again, there's an infinite amount of equations you could come up with. We just have to come up with two. So I'll say, all right, um, h at t, so the height, is equal to, uh, the first one I want to do is probably a coast graph because this looks like an upside down coast, right? Because again, coast usually goes like this. It's just upside down. So I'm going to say negative coast. Um, now I have to put an amplitude. Amplitude is just your radius in this case, 25, right? Distance from there to there and there to there. Of course, that's your radius. So negative 25. And we already said we're going to use coast. And I'm going to leave this here put my t, I'm going to figure out that k value in a second, and then I put my plus 27 because 27 is where the midline is, right? So same process that we've been doing. And now in here, I got to put my k value. So again, what's the period? Well, the period is 3 seconds, so the k value is going to be 2 pi divided by p, which is 3. So k is going to be 2 pi over 3. So this is one equation that you could use to represent this function. Okay, let's come up with another one now because we have to, right? Um, let's say we want to use sine for this one. You could say h at t is equal to, um, so the amplitude's the same, right? So 25 sine, uh, the plus 27 on the end is the same. The question is, how does this look like a sine graph? How could I get this from a sine graph? Like if you're thinking about it, it kind of goes up like this, then it comes down like that, you know, and then it comes back up like this. That's usually what the sine graph looks like, but we're not starting here, right? We're starting down below, and this point here is over here instead, right? Like, if I took this starting point and I moved it over, it would look like a sine graph. Like, this part, that looks like a sine graph, right? So how do I get to that point from a regular sine graph? Well, it looks like I had a sine graph here that has been moved to the right, right? This looks like a sine graph, but it's been moved to the right because it usually starts here. Now it starts here. So all I have to say is I'm going to put t minus, because we're moving to the right, to 0 0.75, because 0 0.75 is where this is starting now, whereas a sine graph usually starts here. So it's like a sine graph moved to the right that distance. Hopefully I explain that okay, and you can visualize how that's working. So t minus 0 0.75. Now, we also have to find the k value, right, that goes there. So you say, okay, well, the period for this is the same as the period for the previous one, right? It didn't change, so the k value should be exactly the same, right? 2 pi over 3, that's not going to be different. So this is another equation that you have that represents this function. Um, and I would encourage you to try to find a couple more maybe, right? Another sine and another cos, because these aren't the only ways to do sine and cos, right? You could do a cos that has a phase shift instead of a negative. You could do a sine that maybe has a different phase shift. Or you can do a combination, right? You can make the sine negative and give it a different phase shift, or make the cos negative and have a phase shift, right? Like there's any number of possibilities that you can do here. So definitely try that on your own. Come up with a couple more equations.